MTN Sports. This is Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome to Bobcat Insider, your home for Bobcat hoops this season. I'm Ashley Washburn. Alongside Keen Glogley, and in just a bit, we'll have both Danny Sprinkle and Trisha Binford join us. But let's start with men's hoops. Quite the defining road week for them, a win over Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona. And you were courtside for those, so I'm just going to let you take the stage and see what you saw because it was definitely a great win, great two wins for this program. Well, in that Northern Colorado game, you know, we thought Northern Colorado was going to be better. They, you know, they started the, the league conference now 0-4 after losing on Saturday going down to the wire with Montana after the Cats won that game. But, you know, this is the team that Montana State faced in the Big Sky Tournament Conference Championship game last year. They were picked second in the preseason poll, and that game wasn't close. Overall, Northern Colorado is a great offensive team, and yet they scored only 20 points in that first half, and that was a combination of a couple of things. But it really does speak to the Cats' defense that we've seen this year. Well, and another really big thing to know on this road win is Darius Brown. It's somebody we've been talking about the last couple weeks because he's really starting to come into his own. But big milestone over the week. I'll let you talk about that. Over a thousand career points for this young man. So excited for him. And he did it with some big, big shots in that Northern Arizona game, which was much closer than that final score indicated. They played so hard, NAU did, and Montana State found a way to weather multiple storms in that second half. And Darius Brown has just been such a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, I can't wait to ask Sprinkle, where would this team be without him after Xavier Bishop graduated last year? They had to get some more guard play. He's been awesome. And in addition to the thousand career points, he went over 500 career assists. 150 steals, and he's approaching 500 career re rebounds, and he's done all of that in the four years, which is so impressive, even though, you know, a lot of times I feel like that 1,000 career points is going to get a little cheapened with some of these COVID years, but that's not the case for Brown. Well, and I think you really start seeing, you know, the gauntlet of a non-conference schedule that they have pay off because it wasn't an easy road two games that they just had right here, but to go into Northern Arizona, into Northern Colorado and win with such a dominance, what do you think we learned about this team this week? That they just, they got a loot collar attitude. They don't care. You know, they're going to show up. This is one of the more difficult road trips in the conference to go to Greeley and then down to Flag staff and it just doesn't matter they're so battle tested they're so weathered and that's going to be really important as they get deeper into the big sky conference season because this conference season right now is deeper than it has been in years past and we're going to see more of that on thursday against idaho state and we'll talk about that and more with head coach danny sprinkle after this Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Back on the Bobcat Insider, I'm Keaton Gilogly alongside head coach Danny Sprinkle. Cats coming off a 2-0 week through Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona. And coach, uh, I want to start with a milestone. Over 1,000 career points for Darius Brown. He's over 500 assists now as well. And he got, went over 1,000 points with the 22 in the win at Northern Arizona. A couple of really big shots in that game. What's it mean to a kid like that to reach that milestone? Yeah, I mean, obviously proud of him, you know, and, and the type of player he is, he's a pass first point guard, you know, and so for him to score a thousand points is really impressive. And he did it in really three and a half years because he had the one year cut short with COVID, uh, obviously got injured last year, uh, but it just shows what type of player he is, you know, and we needed all 22 of those points on Saturday, uh, but he's a tremendous player and he's just getting better and better. Well, and one of the big question marks coming into the year was going to be the guard play, and that's a reasonable question to ask, you know, where would you guys be without Darius Brown right now transferring over from CSUN? Yeah, it wouldn't be a good place. I know that. Uh, you know, him and Rob, you know, they were both really good players before they came here. Uh, and we knew they were both injured last year. You know, and it, it took a little bit for both of them to get there. You know, and Rob, he, he's still not there. You know, we still got to get him in shape and, and get him, you know, playing to his level. Uh, but Darius has been tremendous, and, and it's been huge for our team. Yeah, it's been fun to watch him play. And he's still got another year of eligibility after this, which is exciting as yeah, well. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Now, you mentioned Robert Ford. He really has seemed to turn it up on the defensive end over the last couple of weeks. What have you seen from him on that side of the ball? Yeah, that's where he can impact the game. You know, defensively, he does a tremendous job. He did a great job at Northern Colorado, and then I thought he did a tremendous job on Jalen Cohn, uh, who's one of the hardest guards in our league. And so he's tremendously quick. Uh, but he's, Rob has that toughness. And when he doesn't want you to get the ball, you know, it's, it's hard to get the ball. And uh, we're going to need that, especially down the stretch. Well, let's talk a little bit more about this defense as well. You know, Jalen Cohn from Northern Arizona, he put up 45 points in a game earlier this yeah. year, the Virginia Tech transfer. But overall, when you've seen your defense kind of grow over the last couple of weeks, you think about all the top scores you guys have held in check between Isaac Jones, Dalton Connect, you know, Jalen Cohn. What, is, what has impressed you most about your defensive efforts so far this year? You know, I think just our guys, are the mentality coming into the game, you know, 
being detailed in our scout. You know, they've, they've all been different, you know, defensive schemes that we've had to do. You know, obviously with Isaac Jones is different because he's a post guy. Jalen Cohn's a point guard that has the ball all the time. And the three-headed monster at Northern Colorado, you know, I don't think anybody will ever hold them to, I don't know what they had, like 30 points combined. You know, they're averaging almost 55. And it was, it was one of those nights, too, where they have some looks. But when you're getting them out of rhythm, you know, that's what you want. You don't want them getting the looks that they usually do during the game. And our guys have done a great job so far. Let's get a little deeper into both of these games. The win first at Northern Colorado. That was a pretty lopsided win, and this was a team that was picked second in the Big Sky Conference. You met them in the Big T Sky Tournament Championship game last year. Were you a little surprised that this game was so, uh, so separated at the end? Yeah, you know, especially down there. I mean, they, they shoot the basketball really well at home. Uh, but we got off to a great start, and I thought our post guys, you know, really imposed their will on that game, you know, rebounding and, and getting them in foul trouble too. It was hard for them to you know, guard those big guys down there. And so, you know, that kind of got us off to a great start. And then we just kind of, we rode it. And, you know, Tyler Patterson made some threes. And, and Darius had some big plays that game, too. And in the Northern Arizona game, you know, that's a really, really tough trip. You're so high above sea level. It's the second game on this uh, long road trip. And Tyler Patterson, again, he put up another five threes. Mm -hmm. What a bounce back. I mean, he was shooting about 20% from three for the first 13 or 14 games. Mm -hmm. How'd you get him going? Yeah, you know, he's got a lot of pride, you know, and, and everybody at Montana State knew he was an elite shooter. And it was only a matter of time before he started to break out. And, you know, I think that Idaho game kind of sparked him. And, uh, and getting into conference play, you know, he, he's comfortable. He knows the league. Uh, and he's been tremendous the first four games. And, and we're going to need him, you know, the rest of the season because he was getting good looks even in the, in the non-conference. And it was just a matter of time before he starts hitting five or six in a game. Right, and it's something you've been talking about a lot this year. You've mm -hmm. been getting the looks, and eventually yep. those are going to continue to fall. Uh, when you look at the depth of your team, you know, Caleb Fuller was battling an ankle injury this weekend. Mm -hmm. Patrick McMahon unable to make the trip uh, this weekend as well due to an injury. But, you know, Jabril Bello had, you know, single-digit points in that game against Northern Arizona. Yep. Great Osabor was in some foul trouble. What does it say about your depth that you can win games like this even when Bello isn't just that big horse? He doesn't have to be the mm -hmm. greatest player on the floor in order to win. Yeah, you know, I mean, Jabril, he, he draws so much attention that everybody else kind of gets shots off of him. Um, you know, I mean, Northern Arizona, they were, when, they, when we threw it in the very first time, they came and doubled him. And he's done a, a great job this year of passing out of double teams. And it's going to just, it's going to open up the floor for everybody else. And then it comes down to, you got to knock down those shots, you know, to make them pay for doubling him. Uh, but then when you come in with great, you know, he's, he's really good on the offensive end too. You know, and he's, he's very skilled on the block and uh, he's just a big wide body that's, you know, when he gets going on that block spinning around, he's hard to, hard to handle, and, and it's, it's a good one-two punch with those guys. I think the thing about Great that's really stood out is his footwork. Like, guys mm -hmm. that big don't usually look that light on his feet. What do you see in that regard? Yeah, it's probably an international deal. You know, he grew up playing soccer, and, and uh, you know, Jabril has good feet too. And so, you know, I don't know, but I'm glad he does. <laughs> uh, finally, Idaho State and Weber State coming up this weekend. You know, Idaho State is undefeated in the Big Sky right now. They just took mm -hmm. down Weber State on the road. What are some of the things you're looking for this weekend? Yeah, I mean, two of the best teams in the league. You know, I mean, Idaho State is tough. They're physical. You know, they, they run their stuff. And, and defensively, like, they don't make it easy. You take bad shots or you're not disciplined, they're going to make you pay. And uh, we're going to we're gonna have to play our best game on Thursday night. And then Weber State is always, you know, one of the most talented teams in the league. And, and they're showing it, you know, the last month they've been playing terrific. And, uh, you know, obviously Idaho State going into Weber was a huge win for that program. And, and we got to hold, hold serve at home. All right, Coach, appreciate the time. We'll see you, you again bet. on Thursday. We'll take a break. When we get back, we'll transition our focus over to the women's side and talk with Ashley Washburn and later head coach Trisha Binford. Back after this on the Bobcat Insider. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Back on the Bobcat Insider, Keaton Gologly alongside Ashley Washburn. Time to uh, change our focus, and we're going to talk a little bit about some women's hoops before we talk with head coach Trisha Binford. But, uh, Ashley, before we get kind of into the hoops, uh, quite a special day to be able to highlight some things beyond basketball this weekend. Absolutely. On Thursday this last week, they had their game on mental health awareness, and it's something that you're starting to see in sports more as athletes talk about struggling with mental health because, you know, it's a taxing workload that they have. I mean, it's a pretty much a 40, 50, 60-hour job 
job that they're doing week in, week out, while also going to school on top about that. And so, you know, at halftime, they had multiple speakers. But I think one of the greatest parts was there's a video of Taylor Jansen just talking about how important it is to, you know, talk about mental health, especially as a student athlete, because it, they are, you know, doing a job that may, maybe many of us look at saying, oh, you know, their life must be so great. But sometimes people have some inner struggles and you don't see that always talked about. So. Well, and beyond just the mental struggles, you do go through the ups and downs on the floor. And that was kind of what this weekend was, a one-in-one -one weekend against two very, very good teams. And it was kind of the tale of two games this weekend. It was the tale of two games. Uh, right out the jump, they had a really big run to start out that Thursday game against Northern Colorado. Held Northern Colorado to just 12 points. So it was a really defensive-driven game, 22 forced turnovers. But it was the game on Saturday that we talked about last week, knowing that it was going to be a rematch of the Big Sky Championship for March. And it was a game that really came all the way down to the wire and ultimately it came down to points off turnovers for Northern Arizona, and it was a category of 20 to 2 in that standing. And it was just another fast paced game. It was so hard, and it's interesting where the Big Sky Conference is this year with just how deep the top teams are. Well, it's a great way to put it is you know, sometimes when you see those preseason polls, it's so top heavy, but that's really not what this Big Sky Conference layout is. I mean, your top five teams are your best teams, and so this next stretch is going to be insane against Idaho State and Weber State. And we'll go into, uh, you know, what this week is going to look like with head coach Trisha Ben after this. So for Keen Glogley, I'm Ashley Washburn. We'll be back on Bobcat Insider. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Bobcat Women's Head Basketball Coach Trisha Benford. Coach, how are we doing? Uh, doing good. It's a new day here, Ashley. New Always day, a new week. We've got two weeks of Big Sky play in the books. Uh, it was a long-awaited return to the brick. How was it being back in front of a home crowd after it was kind of like more than three weeks at that point? Well, it's great to hear crowd noise in your favor, I'll tell you that, and being able to sleep in our own beds. Uh, we had a really productive week, and uh, yeah, I, there's something to be said of having your fan base and your atmosphere, and we're, we're really generous here in our community uh, getting out and uh, greatly appreciate it. Well, finished the week one and one and started with a 21 point victory over Northern Colorado. But before we dive into those X's and O's, I want to just talk about, you know, it's important to highlight what that game was all about. It was the mental health awareness game. Why was it important for the team to use its platform in that way and spark conversation? Well, as you know, it's uh, it's become, it's increasing every year, and uh, we want to draw as much awareness to it as possible. Uh, our student athletes are doing it. Our community is dealing with it. Anybody that uh, we're impacting and in, uh, in our in our lives, we know a lot of people are going through this. And so, just the more we can surround people with people and encouragement, and uh, getting the word out there and having resources available. Why not use our platform for something really good? Well, in focusing on this team, I know you invest a lot into the mental performance of your team. And part of that is bringing in one of your former players, Scott Morton, every once in a while. Can you just talk about what she does and maybe how that's helped your players? Yeah, you know, just uh, being a director of mental performance in general, you know, there's so much uh, to the game that uh, your, your players are playing with so much pressures on their plate and want to perform for their teammates and they care a lot about each other. And so we just gradually bring her in uh, different uh, times of each year. We work around each their schedules, so to speak, but uh, she had some powerful world, uh, words of just uh, really getting on a growth mindset over fixed mindset and uh, what that looks like, what that looks like to out team as a team and instead of get, getting caught up in the stats and wanting to perform for teammates that way. And it's really been beneficial and we're going to continue to do that work. She just does a great job. So I don't want any other team stealing her, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, I think uh, mental performance is really powerful. Well, it's changing the stigma one conversation at a time. So it's great to see you guys use your, use your platform in that way. But let's also talk about the game. It was a big game at that 21 point victory and Montana State was pretty much dominant on all fronts, but it was really the defense that stood out that game, holding Northern Colorado to just 12 points in the first half. And then I think the really big one that stood out to me was 22 forced turnovers. What did you see in that game and how proud of you were of that performance? Well, yeah, I felt like it was our best uh, one of our best defensive games uh, so far this season as far as defending the three-point line. Northern Colorado averaged eight, eight a game coming in, and we had just coming off the road, uh, giving off a lot of eight-point, uh, uh, a lot of three-point shots. And so we really uh, focused on ball pressure. We focused on defending the three-point line and really protecting our teammates there with, uh, with our fives. And I thought we did a very good job of that across the game. And really it allowed us to get out and get some transition buckets. But the, the forced turnovers was all a credit of just being on on 
the same page and really executing a great game plan. Well, and I think one of the questions that you had going into this season was how you were going to add some of those new faces to what is a veteran group. And to have 10 of 11 scores, I'd say you, maybe you're answering that question, or do you still feel like that there's still some work to be done in that? Well, we definitely are getting a lot of production across the board, and uh, that game in particular, uh, we just uh, everybody was contributing in different ways, and so we are getting a little bit closer. Um, offense really had a really strong week for us. Um, and I think that shows your depth uh, of your ability to score in different ways from different positions. And so we obviously love uh, the kids on that bench and feel like they're all capable and just ready for when their name is called. Well, focusing to Saturday, Northern Arizona rematch of that Big Sky Conference Championship from ma last March. And it was a battle all the way into the end. And it kind of felt like Montana State, you guys had most of the momentum, but NAU obviously pulled away with it in those last couple minutes and won by five. What do you think the difference maker was for them in those final minutes? Yeah, I thought they hit shots down the stretch at the right times, and uh, we missed a couple shots at the at the wrong times. And um, credit NAU, I thought they really came out strong right from the start, set the tone. We responded well. I thought it, we gave ourselves a great chance coming back. Uh, it was just an offensive battle um, from start to finish. And, uh, you know, we go back to the end of that game. It could have gone either way. But at, at the same time, Northern Arizona found a way on the road, and we need to be stronger defensively. Just way too many points that were given up, especially in that third quarter. And, we're going to continue growing. I thought we had a really strong week. Uh, the result didn't show on that Saturday um, in the win-loss column, but we certainly got better. Um, but we definitely need to continue growing on that defensive end. Well, let's focus on the positive side real quick. I think defending the three ball has definitely been a topic of conversation. And although they got those back-to-back -back threes in that third quarter, which is what you're talking about, I thought they did a really good job in that second quarter. I mean, they didn't. There was a really big lapse where they weren't able to make any. Threes. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, the the first half was fairly solid for us, and you know, it uh, with a team like. Northern Arizona, they're going to be a high possession uh, opponent as well as us. We, we both like to run, and so that's why it's such a fun game for the fans. But that third quarter a little bit got out of hand for us. Um, the transition defense, I would say uh, NAU had us on skates all night. Our transition defense uh, definitely got exposed. And so those things are exciting, though, when you look back and you're like, oh, we can fix this, we can fix that, um, and uh, we can clean those areas up. And so we'll definitely have some focal point on just getting our champion habits a little bit more solid in those categories. Well, looking ahead to this week, you've got Idaho State and then Weber State. Idaho State undefeated in big sky play. It's going to be also a big one for the women's team. What's, what are you looking forward to to that matchup and just this week in general on the road? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's no surprise uh, Seton's found a way to have that team rolling again. They had a lot of kids leave that program and uh, graduate and, and a lot of new faces, but the culture and the system doesn't change. And uh, so we're ready to put on some boxing gloves. It's going to be really physical. Uh, I think our posts are going to probably see some double and triple teams and uh, get a, a little bit of uh, a chess match uh, down low. But at the same time, I think we've got some shooters that can really um, get going. We're going to have to move that ball. Our post have been already seeing a lot of double and triple teams and uh, been facing up and attacking those things well, but we're going to have to be ready for it for 40 minutes. It's going to be another battle, that's for sure. That game tip-off is at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. You'll be able to watch that one on ESPN+. Plus. Coach, as always, thank you for your time. After this, we'll be back with more Bobcat Insider. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider, sponsored by First Interstate Bank. Welcome back to Bobcat Insider. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside King Glocally. Just a couple more minutes, and I want to, you know, talk a little bit more about Trisha Benford. There was a lot of good, a little bit of bad that came out of that Northern Arizona game, but it just shows you that this conference isn't top heavy, and it's the same for men, too. You've got some of the best teams, I think, in the mid majors, all in the Big Sky Conference right now. And now the real test is going to be over the next five days for this Montana State, both Montana State programs, three games in five days. And, you know, it's going to start a big one for the men. Right, so for the men, they're going to be home on Thursday and Saturday against Idaho State, who's undefeated, and on we uh, Weber State on Saturday, one of the best teams in the conference, before going on the road to play at Idaho on Monday. For the women, they will be on the road at an undefeated Idaho State team on Thursday night, playing on the road at Weber on Saturday before being back home on Monday. And look, obviously that Northern Arizona game for the women, that's a tough loss. You played your heart out, but it just didn't come out on your side. But... 
you got to bounce right back, and it doesn't get any easier. And it just feels like however difficult it was last week, it's just 5 or 10% more difficult this week. Well, and this is really where you're going to see how well this team will respond. And you've already got two losses in the Big Sky Conference. And so it's kind of one of those questions, how many losses is it going to take, you know, that you might see in that Big Sky Championship game? Because now you've got another tough test on the road, but there's three or four teams all fighting for what maybe will be that Big Sky Championship. But let's quickly talk about the men, too, an undefeated team that you – Montana State is playing on Thursday. How important is guard play going to uh, be this week? Well, immensely important, and that was the biggest question coming into the year, and it's really been answered first and foremost by Darius Brown, but I'm glad Danny Sprinkle brought up Robert Ford as well when we were talking to him because he has been kind of one of the, the quiet pillars in what is maybe the strongest part of this men's squad, which is their defense. It has been week in and week out. They have slowed a lot of the best teams around the conference. Well, depth is a big conversation for both teams, so we'll see who, stands, uh, who steps up this week. And they're going to need it on both sides with three games in five days on both sides for hoops. So, wonderful show today. Happy to talk with Danny and Tricia. And for Ashley Washburn, I'm Keaton Glogley saying so long.